success into focus. My name is John Cutler and I'm a certified Focal Point business coach and franchisee owner of Focal Point Business Coaching Alberta, where proven curriculum is powered by the excellence of Brian Tracy. I work with business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives to help them achieve their personal and business goals faster than they ever thought possible. Every week, I share some of the world-class business material that Focal Point coaches around the world work through with their clients. These time-tested and proven strategies, when applied to your business, result in incredible improvements to your time, your team, your profitability, and your exit strategy. I also interview a different business owner each week, and together with the help of our fellow Focal Point colleagues, we work through a current issue that that business owner is facing within their business. It's a great little snapshot into what business coaching is all about. In our last episode, which was Know Your Customers, uh, we addressed the fact that you really should be analyzing and identifying and then categorizing your customer base into internal and external customers. If you missed it, it is available on demand at FusedLogic.tv. Now this episode, we're going to be addressing the fifth strategic question that you need to have answered in order to gain full clarity in both your business and your life. Session eight is identifying your areas of excellence. So Evan, if you could cue that up, I will ask that the people watching uh, grab a pen and paper because there will be some exercises that, uh, that are involved with this, with this uh, information and I really do suggest that you take part. Okay. So what do you do especially well? What is your area of excellence, your area of superiority? In what area are you better than 90% of the competition? You have special talents and abilities you can use to achieve all your goals in life. If you're serious about taking charge of your life, about achieving your goals, about building a successful and profitable business and making your life a work of art, you must discover what these special talents and abilities are and then commit to honing them into a fine precision instrument. There are five clues that will help you in this process of self-discovery. When you're engaged in an activity in which you're drawing on your special talents and abilities, number one, you are excellent. Not merely good, but excellent at performing the activity. Number two, you find yourself joyful, reveling in the experience. Number three, you're energized. Even though just a few minutes earlier, you may have been overworked, stressed, or exhausted. The fourth clue is that those around you are also energized. That's a great clue to show that, that you're doing what you are meant to do, your area of excellence. And the fifth clue is you have the desire to continually improve in these talents and abilities to settle for nothing short of becoming truly extraordinary. So you even want to get better at what, at what you're wanting to do. What great motivation. Now I did mention earlier that there are exercises and we'll go through them uh, a little bit quickly but I, I will just reiterate that it, this will be available on demand, FuseLogic.tv. Um, so if you miss something, make sure you go back and watch it again because these are key questions that you need to have answered. So in what areas are you excellent? Not merely good but excellent. And try and think of three. Number two, which of your business activities bring you the most joy? And if, if you're not aware of, of what those things are within your business, I'm just telling you, be more aware of what you're doing as you're doing them. And are you happy? Um, so just by going, by seeing this information on the screen, uh, by hearing me say, be aware, now you're going to be more aware and, I, and identify them. Number three, which of your business activities most energize you? Number four, which of your business activities drain you of energy? This is another really important question that, that you need to identify. Because if you can identify it, then you can make changes. Number five, in what activities are you engaged when you notice people around you becoming energized? Number six, in what areas of your business do you find yourself most eager to learn and grow? So what are you motivated to get even better at? Number seven, so considering your answers to all of these questions so far, what are your areas of excellence? Number eight is another great question. What are the core competencies you'll need in order to be in the top 10% of your field 
three to five years from now. Once you can identify these, then you can start to build your plan in order to get there. And one final question, and I'll get Chelsea to come on over and, and join me, our guest. What can you do today to begin developing these key skills and abilities within your business? What can you do today to begin developing these key skills and abilities within your business? And get busy doing it. Great. So we'll take a, a quick pause. We're going to have a a one-minute commercial from the sponsor of the show, which today is me. I've got an exciting event coming up uh, that I just wanted to tell you all about. Are we good to go with that, Evan? Perfect. I'm Peter Clark for the Navigational Coaching Series. On the line, I have John Cutler with exciting information about his upcoming coaching event in September. John? Hey, thanks, Peter. I'm super excited to tell you about our two-day navigational coaching and team-building workshop on September 19th and 20th right here in Edmonton, Alberta. It's specifically designed for leaders, supervisors, and managers within organizations to provide them with better skills to motivate and communicate with their team. Here's the kicker, literally. I've enlisted my dad as part of the delivery team of the workshop, which really makes it a unique and even more powerful proposition. My dad, Dave Cutler, was part of one of the greatest sports teams of all time and won six great cups of the Edmonton Eskimos between 1969 and 1984. He has a ton to offer on teams. The event itself will be in the conference facility at Commonwealth Stadium, overlooking where it all happened. Talk about inspiring. For more information, go to johncutlercoaching.com, and I'll look forward to hearing from you. Great, and welcome back. Uh, sounds like a great event. I'm going to go. <laughs> okay. Uh, back with John Cutler and in uh, with me in studio is business owner Chelsea Lister of Chelsea Fitness Company. And I'll just read off her bio here. Chelsea Fitness Company is passionate about promoting total health and wellness in people's lives. Their mission is to help clients make simple, positive changes every day to enhance overall health, safety, and quality of life. They proudly cater to the diverse needs of individuals seeking one-on-one seeking -on -one personal training and corporate clients requiring a health and wellness consultant for seminars, promoting safety and well-being in the workplace and beyond. Whether you want to look and feel better, inspire others to strive for their personal best or grow, grow a work environment that, that optimizes employee health and safety, they'll certainly help you meet those needs and goals. I'd also like to welcome Hugh Taffel, who's no stranger to the show. He was a Focal Point certified business coach and online social media marketing consultant based in the Mountain Resort community of Canmore, Alberta. He works with business owners and professionals on how best to use the powerful new online and mobile marketing tools and platforms so they get more leads, customers, and profits. How you doing, Hugh? I can't hear Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hold, hold on, Hugh. We'll hear from you shortly, I'm sure. So I'll just uh, start talking to Chelsea a little <laughs> bit. So Chelsea, uh, do you have some feedback for us on, on what you heard within that the educational piece that uh, that we just did? I know we, we spoke a little bit off of camera, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we talked about passion and, and all of that. So what were your impressions of, of your areas of excellence? I, what really stood out was personal training. Like each of those questions was like training, 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 yeah. and people. Yeah. Like I didn't even have a second one. It was just like training, training, training. And right. I was like, that is my passion. Right. And excellence. Right. And I, it all ties in. Yeah. Right. And uh, just to, to fill the, the viewers in out there, uh, what we were talking about is is where her business is going you know three to five to ten years down the road and and chelsea said it, it might not necessarily be training certainly in the health and wellness business in fitness um but she just isn't quite sure of what that's going to look like mm -hmm. down the road and uh, and so i i thought this was a really appropriate uh, education piece uh it's Absolutely. amazing how that happens yeah uh it's you know sometimes you know, when I'm coaching with a, with a client, not sometimes, almost <laughs> every time, it seems that the session that we're on is exactly right for that period of mm -hmm. time. It's uh, pretty wild. Um, so, Chelsea, what, what defines success for you? 
I think my whole um, training experience, the last seven years, mm -hmm. have led up. Everything has been successful. I've been right. lucky in that right. way. Um, training to that point and, and working with people in private training studios, mm -hmm. rec centers, cruise ships, all have led me to success Chelsea Fitness. Right. And, and I, how long have you had the company for? It's a year old. A year old. Yeah. Congratulations. A year old. That's exciting. Yeah. So you've, you've gone through some of those yeah. growing pains, I'm sure. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and if you can get past that first year, it does get easier. We'll, we'll actually... In a later mm -hmm. session, I'll go into the sigmoid curve. I think I just heard Hugh. Was he there? I think so. Okay. Um, we'll get into the sigmoid curve, which which basically shows the life cycle of of a company. Okay. Um, and it, it works for civilizations. It, it works for for businesses. Um, very interesting. So you'll have to tune in on that one. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me, Chelsea, what are your areas of what are your areas of excellence? I love personal training. Um, I love people, and I like ensuring the guest experience. Okay. Those three um, key factors into training are so important to me, mm -hmm. and they come the easiest to me. Right. Like that is my passion mm -hmm. beyond. And working on Disney Magic Cruise Lines definitely enforced it because it, it's Disney. So they teach you customer e sure, yeah, experience and it, it was awesome. And you can tie that into a spin class. You can tie it just one-on-one -on -one training or in a group. Mm -hmm. And when you're excited and show passion yeah. for it, you can get the client excited too. Yeah. And some don't like fitness and it, it's challenging. But when there's a positive spin around on it, yeah. it, it just makes the whole experience um, easier when when you're with Disney because this is mm -hmm. kind of an interesting one for yeah. me is it more difficult to motivate people when they're on vacation or is it easier I think they're more laid back mm -hmm. and Disney's one of the top 10 fittest ships okay. so the busiest time was before breakfast yeah. and before dinner time and yeah. the gym was swamped like you think Disney it's for families right, yeah. right? packed in there mm -hmm. and they would just, but it's a lifestyle. Yeah. That's the whole thing towards fitness right. is they would get it done and then they would go on their excursions, mm -hmm. come back, and it, it wasn't even um, challenging because the ship I was on. Other cruise ships are more um, semi-retired or right. retired yeah. guests on board, but this ship was younger families on it. Okay. So it wasn't challenging. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, tell me, what, what do you consider to be your greatest weaknesses? Like, where, where do you have the most room to improve on, and, and how is that impacting your business? I think the biggest area is um, marketing and bringing new clients in. Right. Um, the clients that I have in, like, training, that is, like, um, very easy for me. Yep. But bringing in new clients mm -hmm. or... Um, grabbing a new lead because I'm I'm so focused on training and stuff and mm -hmm. trying to find time on top of that right. and maintaining your existing clientele. Mm -hmm. I find that that's challenging, but it has to be yeah. looked at because it's a huge part of my training business. Right. Um, this would have been a great time to, to do an illustration that I do called the three eyes of the entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, where the, the entrepreneur always has to be looking forward and when you are looking forward that's when you're actually you know asking questions like mm -hmm. well what if i tried this or how can i do this mm -hmm. you need to be able to spend more time being that entrepreneur when you're training you're the technician yeah right and and that's you're not asking the questions that are driving your business forward mm -hmm. you are basically day to day you're in answer mode you're taking care of your clients mm -hmm. right um when when you when you work with a coach and you know this um I bring I bring owners up to entrepreneurial mm -hmm. status, right? So that's when we do ask ask those questions. Um, one day I will I will do the uh, three eyes of the entrepreneur illustration on the show. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> um, Hugh, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me now, John? I can hear you a little bit, a, a little bit, but you are there. Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm okay. Ha you. Have you? Have you been able to, to listen in on what we're talking about? Yes. Okay. Perfect. 
Can you hear? Uh, just maybe turn it up just a little okay. bit. Okay, perfect. So okay. Hilo, I'll give you the floor. Um, you have a little bit of Chelsea's background. Uh, we've identified that uh, you know maybe the sales and marketing aspect are, are something that that she could uh, you know improve on. So I'll I'll give the floor over to you for for a moment. Okay, hi, Chelsea. Can you hear me now? Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, Chelsea. Oh, perfect. Here. That's okay. Good. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me ask you a couple of questions first. If yeah. I may. You had said that your marketing is your and sales is your biggest challenge with your new business. Now your business is now a year old, or is that right? Yeah, correct. Okay. So the my first question then is, which part of the marketing or sales is your biggest challenge? In other words, is it finding people who might be interested, or is it selling people who? you have had a chance to meet who've expressed interest? I think it's that initial um, meeting the unknown. Because, like, if I if I know someone, it, it, it's not an issue. But if it was, like, a cold caller or just walk up to a business and go in there mm -hmm. and ask, I find that very challenging. Right. And I think if I did it more, it would become easier. But yeah. because I'm intimidated by it, it's more challenging. And just, sorry, just to interrupt here, Hugh, just to backtrack a little bit, um, Chelsea has identified one of the greatest opportunities for her will will lie in the corporate wellness mm -hmm. sector, correct? Yeah, correct? Okay, so that when she talks about going into a business, that's what you're mm -hmm. talking about. Okay. Okay, so then my follow-up question, Chelsea, is how how do your clients find you right now? How do you how do you attract a lot of oh sorry Hugh um a lot of it has to do with um referral based um a lot of my clients refer clients within um and a lot of like my years of training like seven years of training has been like internal um referral based. Another one is my website too, um, that is online and a lot. And just actually being in the gym training, people will come, come up, up to you, you and ask if um, you can train them. Right. So being seen is a crucial thing in the training world. If you're not in a gym and you're not going out and bringing new business in, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Okay. But you would like to have more clients. So, how many more clients can you take on, or what's your what's your goal in that? My goal would to be um, have a full client load. So, with training, like you can train six to eight hours a day, but eight hours is a lot of time training with clients, and you want to give as much um, energy that you can pass on to your clients. Mm -hmm. So a goal would be like six clients a day would be perfect. And then down the road, bring on another trainer that can take on more clients. All right. And how long do your clients stay with you once they start? My oldest client has been with me for seven years. So a long time. Um, and lots generally, like my problem is I can get the client in and train and we can have like a relationship that is for a long time. It's just bringing in new um, clientele. Yeah, the acquisition portion, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So six clients a day, um, we're talking 30 clients a week. How often do you see them? Do you see them every week? Or? Well, it depends on the client because some may be three times a week, mm -hmm. some may be twice a week, or some may be once a month depending on um, if they travel lots or out of town or just based on budget. Um, yeah. But there's many clients, like I tell my clients, if you want to see results, two to three times a week is recommended. Um, yes. Unless you are training on your own, but if you need structure and someone to help you two to three times a week. So that would be ideal. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then based on that, the reason I'm asking these questions is because we all have limited resources, and one of your limited resources is as a sole proprietor or a sole, let's say, a solopreneur, because you're on your own <laughs> at the moment, yeah. right? Okay. So 
your time is your most important asset, and you only have so much time to train uh, clients. Therefore, it seems to me you, you, it would be best for you first to write down in as much detail as possible who your ideal client actually is. How many times a week will they train with you? And uh, everything from age uh, to if they're married to what kind of work they do. Uh, and then you have a number. What That's your goal. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. And you can also make the decision, well, okay, I can do one-on-one, -on -one, but would I do, could I make more money or would, it, would I achieve my business and personal goals if I could have a few groups perhaps or train, train mm -hmm. a few people at the same time? Would that be more effective? Um, anyway, these are the types of questions you want to ask. And then when you know who your real ideal client is and in as you know, detail almost to the blemish on their skin, so to speak, <laughs> um, then you know what and where to find them and what to say to them and how to motivate them. That will come to you much more clearly. I've also got, uh, you know, something to add to that. Uh, what, what we use as coaches mm -hmm. um, is we basically have a, what we call a block calendar. Okay, and what, are you familiar with a block calendar? Yeah. Okay, so you have, you have uh, times of the day where, where you've blocked out, okay, this is where I'm going to be training. Mm -hmm. So here, here, and here. And you can do six of those a day, mm -hmm. right? And have you been able to quantify what each of those, uh, what each of those blocks are worth? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've attached an hourly rate to that. Okay, this one's worth this much. Mm -hmm. This one's worth. And what happens when they're not filled? Does that bother you at all? It does, because you you're thinking, I could fill in this time, but I think the issue is like that is your valuable time right. and you want to be paid that same amount mm -hmm. in that block of time. But where do you start trying to find business? Cause mm -hmm. sometimes going for coffee and visiting right. someone, it may not um, develop into, to a client in that time. But how do you know sometimes like it may develop into a client or it mm -hmm. may develop down the road but sometimes it's not a guarantee so when do you know if that's worth your time because any right. client that you meet could possibly be a client right right you're right but there mm -hmm. is no guarantee you're right Go except ahead, you're unless chelsea if i can interject is yeah. when you are clear on who the profile is Think of it like an avatar. You almost have a picture of a person in all their detail, mm -hmm. age and, and whatnot, of who they really are. And then you will know who you need to talk to who may know people like that. Mm -hmm. In other words, you create a plan first from that. Mm -hmm. Until you know who your target is, you can't. You, you could be meeting all kinds of people. And yes, you'll be wondering, am I wasting my time or not? Once you know the exact person, then you can create your plan on where could I possibly find them, and you write out all the different ways that you can find them. Mm -hmm. Who knows people who would know this type of person, and you make a list of those people. So then you create your sort of plan of attack, which is what we would call uh, a marketing funnel. I don't, we don't have time in this call to go over it, but that's the start. To me, you start with who your ideal client is in, in all their glory and blemishes and <laughs> and the more detail you can get on that the better actually and i like to think of it as um it's much better when you think of it as a person rather than an uh a number or a stat like a, mm -hmm. and you could even give that avatar let's say a name and you'll find it easier and then when you write any type of copy or you change the you know your website or you change your flyer or whatever your other marketing is, everything is aimed towards that person and what that person would most, um, uh, let's say, uh, be attracted to as far as your message goes. Mm -hmm. You'll find it much, much easier. And this leads to one of the biggest principles in coaching that we talk about all the time, which is uh, Pareto's Law, or better known as the 80-20 Rule. 
focus 80% of your energy on, or sorry, turn it around. Uh, mm -hmm. Focus all of your energy on who is the most likely candidate, which often is only 20% of your overall prospects. Mm -hmm. In other words, your top 20% will provide you with 80% of your revenue, etc. So focus as much as you can on the key people, and you will still attract others anyway. Mm -hmm. And something that you mentioned earlier, Chelsea, is when, when you're actually training somebody and, and you're, you're in a gym environment, people are watching mm -hmm. you train that person. Right. So something that came to my mind was, you know, maybe if you don't have a particular coaching or training time block filled, is it possible for you to to go to a gym and fake train, train somebody mm -hmm. for free? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you do that. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Mm -hmm. She's smart. <laughs> <laughs> I that's, knew that's you exactly, were going. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly I'll train what you, I would John. Do. You come to the gym. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Now my stress and level just fit. went way up. No, you'll have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Any anything else to, to add to that, Hugh? How are we doing for time, Evan? Because I, oh, we have five minutes. Okay, uh, Hugh. Anything more to add? Um, no. I think I mean in in the concept of the time that we've got. I mean, there's an exercise. Um, I call it sort of the. Um, I borrowed it from a marketer by the name of Jeff Walker, which. He calls it your launch story, which really is asking all the questions that I just asked. Uh, also going into Chelsea, not just physically what they are like and where they live and their demographics, but also what do you think are their inner core desires and what are their major hot points? In other words, why would they want to train? What's their frustration? Um, what keeps them up at night? In other words, what's their, people will buy your training or people buy anything for that matter. Uh, <laughs> in the end, mostly based on emotion. Mm -hmm. And you want to get at the core emotion and um, getting at what are the consequences if they do nothing, both to themselves, to their family, uh, even to their business, if you think of the corporate client. Mm -hmm. And two, also, what are the consequences to those three groups if and when they actually take you up on the training and where will they be at three months, six months, one year from now? Mm -hmm. Most selling is about identifying the gap between where people are and where they would like to be. And your job is to help make it clear how good it will be when they get there so that they will be, they have enough incentive to make the move to buy and, and start with you. Mm -hmm. Those are, the, those are the things. And that you. this all gets uncovered in what I call the sort of avatar exercise. I think start there, and then you can make your plan on how to find them. Excellent, Hugh. Thanks very much for that. And and something that I, I promised Chelsea we'd, we'd get to um, off camera was, was talking about sales. So mm -hmm. real quick, sales is about communication mm -hmm. as well, right? And we have a great tool called the DISC assessment. Not sure if you're familiar with that. Um, but what it does is it it uh, identifies the four main behavioral styles and how to most effectively communicate with them. Oh, okay. okay, so we'll talk more about that. But what that will do is equip you with basically how to talk to any any behavioral style. Okay, that'll give you the confidence to to maybe make the odd cold call into mm -hmm. a company. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, <laughs> so if we could go to the the take action now uh, slides. Thank you, Evan. I know what's coming right up. Perfect. As Evan shakes his head. Here we go. So here, here are, speaking of which, the DISC assessment. So anyone who's watching today, uh, you get a very special deal on that DISC assessment. Great communication tool. Uh, for those of you in, in a hiring capacity, uh, this is a wonderful tool on making those final decisions on hot candidates uh, to really lower your risk. Uh, on hiring them because it, it basically gives you a roadmap on how to manage them as well. Uh, individual products, financial report on your industry, complete with recommendations for improvement. Give it to you for, for half price. Shows you trends um, and how to improve possibly your business. A one-time 30-minute no obligation pure entrepreneurial call with the coach of your choice, which is either Hugh or myself. You can certainly do that. 
create value there and receive the disk assessment, the financial report for the unbelievably great price of $197. So follow that link. Again, this will be available on demand. So you can, uh, you can go to that link. And then a 90 minute full, sh full session. And in this session, this is where I provide all of the reading that is associated with identifying your areas of excellence. Uh, it's a, another great session. Um, we give it to you for $497. If you're interested in being a coach, just get a hold of me at jcutler or focalpointcoaching.com because there are franchise opportunities available. I'd love to direct, uh, put you in the right direction. Great. So I'm going to take out my earbud <laughs> just for the last part. Um, so we've, Chelsea, I have to thank you. I, thank I you. think, uh, you know, you're, you're not unlike a lot of other business owners out there. Uh, mm -hmm. We all feel the same, the same struggles. And, and for your sharing with us, I think, uh, and Hugh's help, uh, you know, we helped to provide a lot of value for the people who are watching out there. And I hope you got some value Absolutely. as well. Thank you. Um, we'll, we'll certainly talk more off camera about, uh, about, you know, forming strategic alliances and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, which we talked about a little bit already. Um, and so thank you to Hugh Taffel for, for participating mm -hmm. today. Really appreciate it, Hugh. And in our next session, uh, we're going to be talking about how to remove your critical constraints. So another key, key session in the Focal Point program. Be great information. And uh, once again, I'll, I'll invite you to tune in on, on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time right here on FuseLogic.tv. For Focal Point, thanks for watching. <laughs>